All right, how's Banner going to deal with all this? Now, I have talked to many people who work at SunGuard. I've talked to people at conferences. I've tried to get involved as much as possible. But let me be blunt right at the beginning. The true answer is we don't know for sure how Groovy and Grails are going to be used inside of Banner. Or maybe some of you do. I certainly don't. What I do know, or at least what I've heard, is that the first Banner module that intends to incorporate Groovy and Grails will be the student module. And they're supposed to announce at the, the next major SunGuard conference when all this is going to happen. But the strong, strongly backed rumor suggests that this new student module will be rolled out probably around the middle of the year, somewhere around June, I believe, is what they're aiming for. Of course, that's all unofficial, but that's that's the plan. The idea certainly is is to be for Grails rather to be another replacement for Oracle Forms. I don't believe, by the way, that they're going to remove anything. I don't think that they're going to deprecate any existing applications or make it so you, you're forced to rewrite anything that already works. And frankly, I always take the philosophy if something already works, I, I leave it alone. I don't think you need to necessarily port any of your existing applications over to Groovy or to Grails. But if you want to build new applications, then I believe these are going to be options that will be available to you. We don't know exactly what they're going to do, but I know what Groovy does, and I know what Grails does, and therefore we can make some, some educated guesses as to what their role inside of Banner is going to be. Grails is a, a pluggable, extensible framework that does much more than web applications, but it's still used by and large for web applications. So chances are, if you're going to be building web, web applications that take data from an HTML screen and then create domain objects from it and manipulate them and apply business rules, et cetera, and then tr send up a result, well, Grails is the technology that is a very natural one for that sort of use case. Groovy itself, of course, appears in Grails, but I wouldn't be surprised if the, the uh, Banner product will allow you to specify some of your business rules inside Groovy as well. Business rules can be very simple scripts. They can be very powerful applications. That'll be up to you. But I wouldn't be surprised if using Groovy as one of the languages to create your business rules will be supported. I'd be surprised if that was not supported. Maybe I should say it that way. How many double negatives should I throw in here? Let's try it this way. I, I imagine Banner will support both <laughs> technologies. <laughs> so at any rate, that's, that's where I'm headed with this. One of the things I do want to address is what the, the learning path would be for people who are Banner developers really heading into Groovy and Grails. I'll get to that a little bit later. How does the Java world see web applications or applications in general? You know, and again, this is for people who have not been in the Java world very much, and you know, their their exposure to web applications has been through certain other technologies, somewhat simpler ones like PHP or or uh, ASPs or something like that. I don't mean ASP.NET. I mean Active Server Pages in their original form. Well, most Java applications are built around a layered architecture. The idea is that you'll have a presentation layer, which is where you'll take in all your data and when you display things to the outside world. And then when you submit data to the application, probably through a form, then that will go to some kind of controller. A controller's job is to possibly validate the input data, but then it's really to play traffic cop, figure out where do you want to go from here. Therefore, controllers don't generally have a lot of the business logic embedded in them but they instead call classes that do the business logic. These days, that, that layer tends to go by different names like middleware or business layer or something like that. Uh, nowadays, it tends to be referred to as a service layer. That's where your business logic resides. And that layer is the layer that talks to the persistence layer, which is where your mapping to the database takes place. So if you have a database with lots and lots of tables in it, say there's a table called student or a table called course or a table called instructor, then your persistence layer will be the set of classes whose job it is is to turn those tables or table rows into objects and back again. I save a new, say I get a new registration for a student signing up for a course, 
that registration and the updated course information will be in object form in the persistence layer, and then that layer will save it to a database. The service layer will be there to do transactional stuff as well. It's uh, basically saying if we only had one class and one table, well, life would be very, very simple, right? It's when you introduce relationships that life gets complicated uh, on many levels, I should say. At any rate, if I was modifying a student table and a course table and, say, a registration table and an instructor table, well, I wouldn't want to start and stop a transaction for each one of those table manipulations. Instead, I'd like to have one transaction that encompasses the entire, uh, the entire modification, the entire insert, if you will, or update, as the case may be. And those transactions are managed in the service layer. So the controllers figure out where you want to go, the service layers apply the business logic, and then they work with the persistence layer to save everything in the back end. Pretty much any Java-based framework that you encounter will be designed around this type of architecture. The, the other term that I used but I didn't really define earlier is the term MVC. That stands for Model View Controller. This is an architecture that's been around with us since, I don't know, the small talk days back in the 60s and 70s, maybe even earlier than that. The idea here is that controllers and views talk to each other. A controller will pass information to the view. The view will submit information to the controller. Both of those will use model objects. The view will access the information out of it. The model will be passed the view for display. The controllers create model objects and modify them. If any of this stuff is reusable, it's the model. The model doesn't necessarily know anything about the view or the controller. And the views and the controllers tend to be fairly tight, tightly coupled. But the, everything to ac accessing the model goes through the, the view or the controller. The, you don't access the model directly in any of this. This is a figure that was, I guess the term would be uh, reused from Wikipedia. So. so let me just start this thing off by building a little Grails application for you and give you an idea what these things look like. So I have here a tool called Spring Source Tool Suite. This is built on a, an open source editor, editor called uh, Eclipse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little Grails application here. So let me say File New uh, Grails Project. And I'll call it a quest because if we're going to deal with Grails, we might as well search for the holy Grails, I suppose. 